So finally, I've made a start. After planning for weeks, we've made a start on Lord Squiffy. So those of you who haven't been following me, this is a steam pup dog, as it's been named, um, created by my wonderful friend Emma. And if you stay to the end of this video, we'll see some more of her work and how to get hold of her. But when I saw this steam pup dog, when I saw Lord Squiffy, I just immediately had to make him. So I asked for permission and she's totally happy for me to make the dog. So here is the first stage of this. We're doing his fuzzy bits. We'll get onto the steam pup bits of him. And I get asked quite a lot how to make a dog armature just from a picture. So I thought this was a good way to show it. And basically, it's just about the same way as my large dog armature. So I'll put links, uh, in fact, I'll put this all in a playlist with the other videos I've made for how I make these armatures. And what I'm doing, so the picture isn't quite side on, so I'm approximating how long I want the body to be, but I'm making this armature with two strips of wire, and we're just, the first strip becomes the head and the front legs, and then the second strip comes on, it wraps with the front strip to make these shoulders and the back and then the back legs. And so looking at him, I'm assuming he's a kind of juvenile Great Dane. So what I'm wanting to do is his legs are quite long. We're trying to make him quite lanky. I'm going to have big paws and I've just made his back quite short in relation to the size of everything else. Now, if you're following along with me, if you're trying to make him, I would actually make his back legs even longer than what I've done. In a minute, you'll get a you'll get a still shot of the armature so you can get the get an idea of sizes there but I would actually make the back legs even longer because in the picture he has that wonderful look as if he's a gangly juvenile although he is a he is a lord Sir Lord Squiffy there um, but he does seem quite quite juvenile in his legginess which is fantastic so I've just made this armature following along from my large dog armature and just bending up his paw sizes. Now, if you're making any breed of dog or anything from a photograph, it's good to have an idea of sort of the anatomy of a dog and my large dog armature video shows you that and then you just make something roughly based on the size so as as i say i don't know exactly the dimensions of this dog but i'm just eyeballing it a bit um his his hocks to the ground angle is quite a bit quite his his hocks are quite well let down as i believe they they call it in dog showing terms. So that's the top half of his legs quite long and the hock, the bend for his hocks quite low down. And then I'm just wrapping a tail onto him, just wrapping it around the body a few times and using my needle nose pliers to make sure it's really nice and tight, tucked up against the back of his legs. So it's round the body and then round the legs a couple of times, just to give a nice firm tail. And here we go, if you want to have a pause of the video if you're following along just now we're just about to get a good good shot of the armature so you can get an idea of the dimensions but mainly just eyeball it long legs a short a short body and that'll give you something reasonably good and if you're making him just try and make those back legs just a tiny bit longer and i would have been happier with that and the next stage it as always is wrapping now i've gone for a uh, charcoal tops in this case to wrap him and the reason for that well i haven't found a really good dark core wool so i'm just going with i'm afraid merino tops just to be in the right color and i've gone for charcoal so i can do black bits later and hopefully they'll show up so you just want to wind this onto the armature and keep Keep your roving, keep your tops flat like a ribbon as you're winding and try and wind it as reasonably tight as you can go. I kind of anchor it at the top of the body and then wind down to the paws and I'm winding a couple of times over the paws just because I want them bigger. We're going to come back and do more there. So here's another close up of this. Just it's anchored on at the top of his body and trying to keep the roving nice and flat like a ribbon and winding neatly trying not to have too many bunches up or anything and not pulling too tight else you'll kind of bend the wire but just trying to wrap around a few times and you tack it on 
with your felting needle. We'll come back, we'll do loads of felting later. So you wanna do the three other legs with this. And then for the front left leg, I'm not going all the way down to the foot because in, in the drawing, he's, a, he's an amputee. He has a peg leg here. So I'm just going maybe about three quarters of the way down the leg because I know as I felt that's gonna contract up the wire a little bit. Now this is a bit of a risk. I've tested baking the polymer clay in the oven with a felted piece so hopefully this will work out. I'm going to sculpt on him afterwards once I've made the felt dog. And now I'm just going over the legs just thickening them up with a little bit of roving and we're going to butch up his body. So what I tend to do is think of muscles or bony areas like here in the chest. I've rolled out just a piece of fleece to make a chest so it's a bit butcher and then I'm taking some roving and wrapping it over the chest. This holds it in place a bit easier. We are going to felt it but it makes life easier and it also it's kind of like a skin if you think of bones and organs and then skin. So I cover over what I've just done. This makes it easier to smooth later when I'm felting as well. I'm given a few winds over the tummy as well. I always make them too skinny and although this guy is quite skinny I'm still adding a little bit little bit of bulk round round his tummy area but more at the chest because dogs obviously have a bit more bulk at their chest it's where their ribs are and their heart and all that all the good stuff and I'm just taking again you just take little strips of fleece to bulk out areas to smooth over areas and it's going to be two to three times bigger even if you've even if you wrap quite tightly, it'll be two to three times bigger than how it's going to be when you felt it down. Now we're making the thigh muscles, again with just a little roll of fleece that I just felt onto the front of his legs. Um, so you want it to be sort of thicker in the middle and thinner at either end and just felt it on in front of the leg bone here. And then again, I'm going to wrap it with a small amount of fleece. This helps smooth out that edge and hold it in place. Don't wrap too tightly, else you'll deform. We want a flat, a flat thigh that kind of curves out the way rather than get thick all over the place. So you're wanting to keep that edge, that extra lump that you put on. You just want it to keep it pointing forwards. It's easier to do the legs when you can separate them from the body in this undignified position and then again wrapping a little more around the belly really i'm just getting paranoid about this belly area because i always make them way too skinny and a little bit extra in a figure eight around the tops of his legs just ties everything together ties the body and the legs together and gives a little bit more more beef to his bum and then after a good hour or two felting to smooth up, this is the kind of shape you're aiming for with him. There's still a lot of work to do here, but we've got the basic shape of a leggy dog with three legs and the, the excess wire is going to be used for holding the clay on when we get to that bit later. And now just... Again, I've decided that I want his paws to be even bigger. Great Dane type dog has quite thin legs, but quite big paws, and this makes him look cuter and even more cartoony. So just taking equal sized little pinches of fluff and felting them on to make a kind of ball shape, really. I want it to be a little more bulk at the top and then wrap it around a little underneath so that it stays kind of kind of smooth and now we're going to work on the head again I'll have videos for how I make my closed muzzle head dog how I make the bracky type dog and um, all of these this is just a mixture of both pr pretty much we're making a head with almost a closed muzzle and then building the droopy lips at the side and then popping on an extra lip so again we'll have videos for more, more detail of that in the playlist which is in the cards but I've just made a ball to go on top of the head shape here we're going to felt this into shape it is pretty fiddly again you can stick the ball on and wrap like a skin over it to hold it in place I tack it on a little bit before I do that anyway 
and yeah they go through ugly phases people kind of give up when they get to a phase like this they go oh it looks terrible it's never going to look right but if you felt and felt some more and felt again and just keep the needle moving in the direction you want the surface to be then you're going to get what you're looking for and i'm wrapping on a little more to get a bit a bit more bulk on the nose it's starting starting to maybe make it a little bit longer now again i would have probably made the mouth a little bit longer than how i've ended up with but he's going to be holding a hat in his mouth so i just wanted to make it a little bit shorter for strength from all the fancy bits you see i'm actually felting a couple of hours just sitting putting a movie on sit in front of the telly and felt away so this is what you're seeing here. I make up the basic shapes and then just sit down, spend a good while. This dog, to the stage I've got to at the end of this film, took around three days to get to this stage. So there's no rushing. You start working on a, a structure and then sit back and felt it till it's nice and smooth until you get to a strange bit like this. And now I just bulk up the neck with a couple of wraps around there and I'm making his mouth just by to this center nose piece that I've made, I'm just adding two lumps of fleece that are gonna be almost kind of C shapes, C shapes of fleece. And you just, just see, I'm felting them in, trying to have them hanging down from either side of the mouth, just rather like what the dog's mouth is, pretty much. <laughs> and just really careful, felting in between. Here's just a, a closer look of this keeping an idea of the shape of the dog's mouth that you want. So if there's a bit where you don't want it to be, felt more in that area, move the fibres a bit, squeeze it between your fingers and carefully felt between your fingers. Just keeping in mind that final shape that you want until you get something a bit like this. Off camera also felted an ear, which is just a big triangle. I could have actually made it even bigger, but this is this is the size I ended up with. So a nice big, not too thick triangle and felt it till it's really firm. And then we're felting it onto the top of the head. He only has the one fuzzy ear. He's gonna get a prosthetic ear later. I'm looking forward to seeing how that works out. So tacking this to the top of it, top of his head. This is kind of fiddly to get it set, but just hold it as best you can between between your fingers and felt down really carefully. And then his ears folded over. So once it's firmly in place, felt it over, fe bend it over, and then felt in that direction. This was ridiculously fiddly to try and get a shot to show you what I'm doing, but I just hold it in sh in the shape that I want it to be and then felt along that line so it starts to hold felt along the bend at the top of the bend around the sides of it just felt everywhere along that bend and then it starts to hold its shape and we're just going to make his lower lip just by making a, a long c shape um, as i'm felting i'm checking to see if this is wide enough or needs to be narrowed down. If it needs to be narrowed, then I'm felting in the sides more. If I'm happy with the shape, then I start felting from the, from the front more. And while we're at it, we'll just make his single eyeball as well. So this is a, a hump shape. This is a semicircle. So if you haven't already, I've got videos on how to make balls and also how to make the cat's paw. This, that's also a semicircle shape but just felt in a way to get a nice smooth semicircle in white to be his eyeball and then we're just using the drawing as a reference just felt in that carefully onto his head so again as this is a cartoony image the eyes are quite a bit bigger than they would be in real life and a little bit protruding this is great fun that i'm able to add a little cartoony element rather than trying to make it a realistic dog and a tiny pinch of black rolled up into a ball for his pupil as well. You can also add an even tinier bit of white into the pupil to make the spark in the eye. I would usually do that, but I'm following the reference drawing and he doesn't have it, so he doesn't need it. So I'm just leaving that. He is in the image, as you can see, looking down. So I'm working on that. He looks hilariously like some kind of strange alien just now, but I'm sure once all the other pieces are completed, he'll look far better. 
and then that lower lip that lower jaw that we made we've just got to felt it on i find it easier you just pop it on so that the lower jaw is sticking out slightly further than you want it to be and as you felt into it that'll slowly take shape it'll get a little smaller as you're felting in so just gently holding this where you want it to be and felting all round if you need to if there's any any lines that you don't want towards the towards the neck area you could add small pieces of fleece to smooth it over Remember and keep your piece moving at all times in all directions don't just stab in one area because that'll make a dent and now the reason I went for the charcoal fibers were so that hopefully some black would show up it doesn't show up greatly on camera but it does in real life you can just see the difference this is a pinch of jet black fibers and um, this is carded black merino and I'm just shaping it into a nose again quite quite a large nose for this dog it's quite cartoony and I'm making a kind of elongated triangle shape so the top of his nose is going to be the longer end of the triangle and to a rough rounded point at the bottom and just it's easier to spend a fair bit of time felt in this reasonably firm not all the way firm but you get the shape off the body because we want the nose we don't want to smooth it out this time we do want lines we do want to see where the join of this is if you put it on when it was too soft then they would blend into one so popping the nose on where where noses should be and I think you can just about see that the black is slightly more black than the charcoal but in real life that shows up just a touch better as well and making sure to felt from the nose into the muzzle of the dog not having the needle pop out in pop out on the charcoal at all anytime there's a different colored small area like this if the needle popped out when I was felting it on the, then we would have tiny pieces of the black shown through the charcoal and we don't want that so any fibers from the actual black are going into the the main body of the piece rather than poking out to the outside and you can just about get a glimpse of that triangle shape I was talking about and because we're going by the cartoon image noses can be a bit wet and a bit shiny so I'm adding a tiny glint of white onto his nose as well just to add that shine it's a little bit fiddly it's super important here to make sure that I get all the stray fibers tucked in into the white and none of them showing up on the nose or on the face of the dog that's one little one you can see there that's just going to need a trim but overall nearly got that sorted and you can either felt them in or trim any extras that are really doing your head in I had to tuck his tail in at this point it will come back later but it was doing doing my head in when I was trying to felt on any on the desk it was scraping on the desk so here is Em's wonderful steam pups he's the other dogs as well and um, she also has some merch if you're interested at all and here is where you can get her stuff so thank you so much for joining me and i'll see you next time for what else i do with this dog <laughs>